present a sign of uh, the success of the conquest. So I will move forward to the second part, uh, this uh, about the historical background, uh, starting with the Muslim uh, rule in Sicily. So uh, we can see that the Muslim uh, started their invasion in Sicily in 827 in response to an appeal uh, by rebelled Byzantine commander who pronounced himself a ruler of Syracuse. Uh, and the conquest actually faced uh, serious difficulties uh, that it took about 75 years to, uh, to be completed. Uh, the fall of Palermo was in uh, 831 followed by a Muslim uh, control over the Western region of Mazara. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, they took uh, Palermo uh, to be their uh, capital. Uh, then uh, expanded their uh, control over uh, the, uh, the, the whole uh, island, uh, moving first to the central part, which called Notu. And then to the, and not to, it has the, um, the old uh, capital, uh, Syragos. And then the last part was the northeast, Demon. So the Muslim dynasties in Sicily uh, started with the Aghlabid dynasty and then followed by Shiite uh, Fatimid dynasty and from 948, the Kalbid dynasty. Uh, then we have. Uh, um, period of independent uh, re uh, regional rulers uh, that uh, invited uh, through its conflict, uh, its conflicts, the Norman, um, uh, the normal, uh, the Norman uh, co conquest afterwards. So moving to the Christian rule uh, in Sicily. Uh, we can see that uh, Christian rule in Sicily started after the fall of Muslim rule through the conquest by uh, Normans due to the call of uh, the Muslim rule, uh, ruler, Ibn Sumna, uh, the ruler of Syracuse. So uh, it's the same scenario calling the Muslim conquest of Sicily before. And we have here uh, two kingdoms, uh, the Normans and then the Stalfans. So due to, the, to, to save the time, I will move to the main part. Uh, he, here I just um, uh, made uh, this map to show uh, the Christian rule, how, uh, the timeline for the Christian rule starting with Messina in uh, the Northeast and then they captured uh, Balerm and it's only, it has only took them 20 years to uh, control the whole island. So this is the main part of this study, uh, which is uh, the comparison between Islamization and uh, Christianization. Actually, the initial uh, comparison for the time period of both uh, process will show uh, the fast Christianization compared with a relatively slow Islamization. This can be explained due to a difference between the policies of Muslim and uh, Christian rulers. So examining the policies of Islamization, we can see that the first policy of Islamization in Sicily taken by the Muslim Aghlabid rulers uh, was through encouraging the immigration of uh, Muslim uh, Muslims from North Africa and uh, Al-Andalus, especially for the families of the soldiers serving in the conquest of Sicily, so, so that they could settle in the island. Accordingly, Muslim population increased uh, starting from the west, uh, the western district of Mazara. And on the other hand, the, uh, the conquest operations led to a uh, decrease of uh, some Christian uh, population due to the wars, starvations, and uh, disease under the Muslim sage. Also, the procedures of Islamization in Sicily included the acculturation between Muslims and Christians that in some cases uh, of intermarriage, daughters followed their mother's religion 
of Christianity while boys followed the religion of their uh, Muslim father. So intermarriage also was another procedure of Islamization, uh, producing a Muslim generation due to the Islamic law, allowing only Muslim men to marry with the Christian or Jewish women so that the children uh, would be Muslims. So we can uh, see also uh, that uh, persecution for the Christians was not among those policies of Islamization generally. But of course, there were um, some exceptions. Also, there was a number of Christian uh, population uh, of uh, Sicily enslaved by Muslims in addition to other slaves that existed already in Sicily under the former uh, Ro uh, Roman rule and were inherited by Muslims. So this inferior so, uh, social status of that uh, Christian population can be recognized as one of the factors behind their uh, easier adoption of Islam uh, seeking better social status. Uh, another Islamization policy can be seen in building mosques, which is considered to be the first step of um, establishing a Muslim uh, society in, uh, in Muslim conquered territories. So the mosques of uh, Sicily emerged as uh, centers of the intellectual life through its uh, activities of Arabic and Islamic education led by uh, many prominent scholars. Uh, the emergence of those scholars can be seen as an, uh, a um, an evidence of uh, the role of individuals in preaching Islam among uh, Sicilians as the works of those Muslim uh, scholars would help uh, spreading the Islamic uh, knowledge through their uh, society. Some of those scholars followed Su Sufism. So this also, um, make us think, think about the contribution uh, of the Sufism to the Islamic, uh, to the Islamization process. Uh, as uh, Sufism uh, charm people, attract them to uh, Islam through its mysterious practices. So this was about the Islamization. So for the um, Christianization policies, we can see that it went through two distinctive uh, stages. The first one un was uh, under the Normans and the second one was under the Stauffens. For the Normans, they chose a soft policy towards the Muslims of Sicily, which shows a wise uh, vision considering the fact that they had to rule a population of Muslim majority in Sicily and they could gain benefits receiving the support of Muslims who were experts of the administration and the other phases of rule in Sicily. Uh, in addition to the uh, Muslim prominent achievements in science and intellectual life during that time. This uh, soft attitude of Norman kings towards Muslims can be seen in using many Muslims in their army courts and um, using Arabic themselves. But in the same time, Norman, kind, uh, Norman kings founded and funded uh, churches and monasteries in Sicily, leading the Christianization uh, process. Uh, on the other hand, Norman kings gave their uh, relatives uh, fiefs and uh, used the Normans in high ranking positions in the administration. So in this context, we can see the rule of Roger's wife, Roger's the first, um, the first Norman um, uh, ruler in Sicily. His wife um, uh, played uh, an important role in Christianization of Sicily through encouraging Lombard uh, immigrations uh, from uh, Northern Italy, which continued by other Norman kings. So actually the Norman toleration for Muslims can be seen as a tool of governing, but their end, their target in fact was to Christianize uh, Sicily and they 
Uh, and that's what they achieved uh, uh, gradually and softly without needing to do a sudden change of the demographic st uh, structure that could include the conflicts confronting, uh, confronting a society of Muslim majorities. So uh, those implicit uh, policies of Christianization were supported by the papacy. Uh, granting the Norman kings with the divine authorities, with the privileges of uh, appointing bishops, uh, collecting revenues of the church, and judging church uh, affairs in Sicily. This was reflected in the increase of building churches and monasteries by Normans, included uh, uh, at least 50 monasteries in the east of Sicily. Those Christians uh, Christian institutions led the Christianization process in Sicily. Uh, we can see that a uh, conversion of Muslim uh, community leaders was target for missionaries, hoping for the uh, conversion of other Muslims following those leaders. Another factor uh, contributed to the Christianization uh, was violence and the social oppression by Christian uh, population against Muslims, leading to the decline of the Muslim population, especially after the death of the Norman King uh, William II, who was seen as the last protector for Muslims. Uh, this led to Muslim uh, revolts that increased due to their deteriorated status uh, under the new Christian rule of Stauffens. Uh, by that time, Muslim population was already declined to, to appear mainly as uh, rural uh, populations of peasants serving on the lands of churches. So another uh, procedure of Christianization started with the, the Norman King William by granting the Church of Montreal uh, with a great privilege and uh, vast lands, including the people and properties of those lands, mainly inhabited by Muslims. So uh, accordingly, the pressures over the Muslim community were inten uh, intensified, increasing their uh, conversions to uh, Christianity. So uh, speaking about enforced conversions, we can see that during the rule of the Stauffens, the policies of Christianization was more vivid uh, through in, enforced conversions, burdens of the taxes, and the conversion uh, would be, uh, those enforced conversions would be among the, the reasons uh, drove Muslims to rebel against the rule of the German King Frederick II, who could not follow the tolerated attitude of um, Normans through, uh, toward Muslims due to uh, the continued Muslim revolts. And the last policy adopted by the Stauffens towards Muslims of Sicily was eliminating their presence through deportation to the countryside of Italy, away from Sicily. So eventually the Muslim uh, presence uh, vanished in Sicily through this final policy. So the, uh, this table can sum up the comparison between Islamization and Christianization of Sicily. So we can see more efficiency in Christianization uh, process, uh, which was faster taking almost half of the period of the Islamization process and ending with eliminating the uh, Muslim pop uh, population in Sicily. Uh, we can see also similar procedures of um, immigrations and repopulations, while the difference can be clear in the institutional role, uh, which was obvious in uh, the church rule uh, led by the kings, uh, especially in the case of the great uh, church of Montreal. Uh, this was reflected in uh, applying enforcement more vivid in the Christianization, uh, which led to revolts by Muslims that we, can't, we cannot see in uh, the Islamization process that almost didn't face any revolts by Christians. 
Uh, as for the uh, individual role, we can see that it was uh, seen mostly in the Islamization through the role of the Muslim intellect intellectuals uh, with their works on the different fields of Islamic studies and also by the efforts of individuals who competed in building mosques of their own. But for Christianization, the main role was through the kings uh, who were placed by the papacy to fund the Christianization process, granting the churches with privileges and um, authorities over Muslims. This rule of church is not comparable with the rule of mosque, which have no authorities. Uh, also, uh, the intermarriage was uh, one of the uh, procedures of Islamization. Uh, that we can see uh, clearly in the Christianization. This can be explained through uh, the fact that Muslim men are allowed to marry Christians uh, while uh, the opposite, it's not allowed. Um, and uh, usually the children of those marriage became Muslim and most, mostly the wives also uh, convert easily to Islam. Another uh, common thing in this comparison would be the influence of the language. We can see the Arabization com accompanied the Islamization, um, while the Latin Latinization accompanied the Christianization process. So by this comparison, we can come to the conclusion that uh, there were similarities uh, regarding some procedures like repopulation of the cities, encouraging immigrations, uh, and um, building religious places. But the difference is obvious in the role of the ruler, as the Christian kings were officially taking the responsibility of the Christianization by papacy blessing. On the contrary, Muslim rulers did not have such a duty for Islamization as they were satisfied maybe by the status of the um, non-Muslim population being protected under their rule uh, through the uh, tribute, the jizya system, uh, expecting that like other conquered territories uh, through immigration, intermarriage, uh, culture assimilation, and the efforts of Muslim intellectuals, Gradually, Islam will uh, penetrate. So the same comparison also can be applied on the role of church in Christianization versus the role of the mosque in Islamization, as the mosques do not um, have that um, hierarchy system, priesthood, uh, the papacy leadership, uh, which the churches have. So the role for of those mosques is weaker comparing with the role of churches. Also, when we examined the Christianization process in Sicily, we found that we have um, um, within the, the Christian rule, uh, the Normans uh, policies were different uh, from the Stauffen's policies regarding Christianization. As uh, the Normans uh, mostly chose to adapt soft policies tolerating Muslims, while the Stauffens mostly adopted non-tolerated policies ended with the elimination of uh, Muslims from Sicily. So by this, I guess I have uh, finished my uh, presentation. So thank you for listening and I'm ready to uh, answer any questions.